I think it's ready to be. I think. Oh my fucking god, dude. Jeez, bro. Oh my god, it was way more than I thought. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're just, just keep, we keep going with this one. We're gonna talk about the Tyrant today. The Tyrant 10, bait that's been years in the making. The bait's finally at a point that I think is it's ready to be released. As with any of the baits that I make, there's always gonna be improvements. I already know there's more versions that are being, gonna be coming in the future, but for now, this is the bait I have been fishing for the last mm, season and a half. It's caught a lot of fish on it. I just wanna go through the basics, do the introduction of the multiple ways that you can fish this bait. It's a soft bait that I wanted to make sure that a guy he can either fish it up top, mid column, or on the bottom, beast hook, or treble hooks. So it's a multi-use, multi-levels of the water column bait. But it's definitely not a bait that should be your first swim bait. It's gonna take a guy that has some experience with larger soft baits that's willing to kind of finagle with stuff and, and make little tweaks that are gonna suit his fishing. He can manipulate the bait for his very specific needs. I just wanna make sure all the little bells and whistles are there that facilitate him doing that. So, all anyway, right, we're gonna have three different versions. These are all, of course, blems. That's what I end up fishing for myself 99.9% .9 of the time, but it doesn't matter. Blems still get bit, but I just gotta tweak them a little bit more. But I'm gonna go through how to rig each individual one and kind of talk, actually, let's just stop right here. Let's talk about the bait itself. The bait is 10 inches, right around six ounces, especially depending on how you rig it. Uh, it has the hollow cavity on the inside, the weight pocket, and the head case harness in it. It has a hybrid wedge tail design that gives it both a side to side action, plus a little bit of clockwise twist to it. It's not designed to be a replacement of the other big soft baits out there. It's just an additional tool to give fish a different look. It has different performance to any of those other baits that are out there. In my opinion, why do I need to replace proven baits? I just need to have another option so I can fish that bait, that bait, and this bait. If you're looking at it as a replacement of those, that's not really a deal. You should look at it as a new tool to achieve an objective. At least that's how I look at it. So the little tail action, little change in the tail, change in the profile, and then the overall performance of how the bait can fish top, middle, bottom is kind of clutch in this situation. So we're just playing it real wild, fast and loose, but I'm gonna rig it up as the easiest method for it and the most snagless method that you're gonna be able to fish this bait. That's a 12 watt, three quarter ounce owner beast hook. We have them available on the site. You can also pick them up plenty of other places. 12 aughts are not that hard to come by for the most part. Um, I've already removed the CPS spring on it because this part right here is gonna snap right in to the eye of the head case harness. Just take your trusty little pliers and then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna open this eye up just a smidge. It doesn't take much. So I opened it up a little bit. I got fish blowing up in the background behind me. I can't wait to get on the water, but I'm gonna just take it and I'm gonna pinch her, pinch her down. Super simple. Now, a lot of guys, the placement of the screw eye is probably gonna be fine for them starting out. I actually like to button it down a little bit more. So I'm gonna do a couple of twists so it's really buttoned down. You don't wanna over crank it though. If you over crank it too much, you might end up breaking the inner case, like your, the inner head case. So just kind of be vigilant of that, but I like it so it's real buttoned up. Eh, I think I need to back up one bit. I went too tight on it and it wasn't gonna sit. Then it's just as simple as kind of taking that hook up to the top, lining it up. It should go right about there and just stabbing it through. And then I know it's gonna come out right back here. So then just bending the bait, feeling with the tip of my finger and my eyeballs, like where is that point gonna come out? Right like that and boom it's that simple but like I've always said before with the other baits if you look at how that hook is sitting on the back that hook point is pointing down you're not gonna catch fish that way take some pliers grab the actual 
part of the hook right there, grab some pliers, and then just crank that thing up. Now what's the hook point doing? It's not digging into the bait. It's sitting up nice, flush with the back, so that when you drag your finger across it, I feel it grabbing my finger. So that's gonna be good fishing if you wanna be in 10 feet of water. Now, what I actually prefer to do, so I can keep it real low, and I can pick up the pace if I want to, is I'm gonna take two 332nd ounce tungsten nails, and I'm gonna put it right there in the fin. I'm gonna push it parallel back. So it's running parallel with the bottom of the bait. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And then that's it. That bait will sit up on the bottom. If you just let it go down there, it's gonna sit just, just sitting on the bottom. But that is as snagless as you're gonna get. You're gonna be able to swim this right through the toolies. I've caught fish up to 11 pounds, throwing it into toolies and pulling, up, pulling it out. Those fish have came up, blasted it, or it's just bank, bank, bouncing off toolies and they smoke that thing. Being able to put a bait where you can't put any other giant soft bait is such a game changer. That's that version. Next version is using the hangman kit. I call it the hangman kit because it gives you several different options. It's pretty simple, straightforward when you get the bait. The bait's just gonna come like this, just how the other trout version did. I'm gonna take these scissors though, I'm gonna pop the belly cavity open just a smidge because they all come sealed. That's how I prefer to fish the beast hook versions, sealed, so that the hook's not constantly sliding in and out. But on this, I need to open it up because I'm gonna add in a special little part. And this is the bubble. It's part of the hangman kit. It's a flotation device that's shaped like that so that it locks in place once it's actually put in the bait. I just added a little bit of water to it so that it will slide into the bait easily. And then I'm gonna go right in here. This is the front part of it, the back part. Definite shape to it, if you can tell. Go ahead and slide it right up in there. And then as it's wanting to come in, you're gonna start seeing it wanting to poke through the chamber. Take my thumb back here, kind of force it up, and then guide it out off that top so that it doesn't just poke right out through the, the top of the back. And then stretch, and then boom. Push it up forward, pulling the back back, and it goes up there and locks in place. And so now this bait will float 100%. You throw it in the water, it's gonna float. Now we're gonna get into if I want it to rig as a belly or top hook. I'm gonna go ahead and do the belly rigging first so that you can fish it as a floating bait. These are gonna come on the site. It's a part of the hangman kit. I have both the belly version and the top version. These are VMCs, 1X strong, size two. Can catch a lot of fish on these hooks. I haven't had them bent out. I was using a different hook for a while, but they've discontinued that hook. So I had to adjust and I've been satisfied with these hooks so far. But so this is the belly version. It's silver, obviously to match the belly of the bait. Everybody's gonna wanna rig theirs a little bit different. It's how they wanna fish it. But I already know just right out the gates that I'm gonna have to just bend this wire just a little bit so that it, it sits nice and tight on the belly of the bait. And that's just kind of hitting that eye, just bending it up a little bit. You have this eye and then the screw eye on the bait. You just snap it on in, just like the beast hook. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pinch that eye down and then I'm just gonna go ahead and button this down again, just like I did with the beast hook. Just keep twisting it. And the way it's gonna be set up is this shank right here, for end up, I'm actually gonna cut it off, which I should have been more prepared for this, but I'm prepared enough that the dike's right there. That shank, I'm just gonna cut it off. We're gonna take that, and it's gonna wrap just down and then it's gonna nestle right in like that on the bottom of the bait. These will also be available as these little pins. You'll be able to buy them in bulk. They'll come with the kit as well. We're gonna take these little pins and I'm gonna just take it and I'm gonna push it in right behind the eye and I'm just gonna slide it up in there just like that. Then back down here, I'm gonna take another pin 
and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna pin it on in. And you might have to wiggle it around a little bit because you got that resin flotation hiding in there. But once you find your little sweet spot, you got it and it will stay in there. And I like to angle them so they go a little bit back towards the front of the bait. Now for the most part, that's pretty low key, but I actually prefer to get a little bit more stealth than that. What I actually do, I'm gonna take that out, take that pin out, pop this up. I have a torch. I have it on the water all the time, but I'm gonna torch, I'm just gonna heat this hook up briefly. Just enough so it's gonna be warm when it hits that plastic. I'm just gonna slide it right back in there. There we went. Now I'm just gonna repin it. So it holds it in there nice and tight. And we're talking about millimeters of difference in the wires, but to me, it makes a difference. Now it's just that much more stealthy. Now you can do that how you prefer. Like what I really get into it, I'm gonna take my little hot knife that I always have on the water with me. I'm gonna heat this up. And then I'm just gonna reseal that belly cavity. You can hear it sizzling. Hold it closed for a second. And that should reseal that belly cavity right back up. The last thing, depending on your water temps, is you're either gonna want a 332nd ounce tungsten nail, or I believe it's 1 16th ounce tungsten. And the bait has two holes back here on the underside of the bait. This hole right here, the more anal hole, actually goes back in this direction. This one up here comes up in this direction. Both are designed so you can slide a tungsten nail in there if you need it. But for the floating version, just take that, put it into the hole, and then just push it on back. And you're gonna want to actually make sure it gets back in there decently enough. You can do that by just kind of like working it back so that it can get all the way back there. That acts as a counterbalance to the hook that's up front. You don't want it to be front heavy unless you want the bait to float and then when you crank it, it swims down. If you want that action, you put a little bit more weight up here, but not so much that it's gonna cause the bait to sink all the time. If you want the bait to float tail down, which is how I prefer, I'm gonna want that little weight back here. That way it's gonna sit in the water floating like this. When you're retrieving it slow, water is always grabbing the tail. You have the weight of the line is gonna pull this down as well. So you gotta take all that into consideration when you're fishing it up top. Let me go ahead and throw this in the water over here real quick and see what it does. See, I need the water temps at the temp that I need to actually put the slightly heavier weight in the, in the ass end of it. So the 332nd ounce one back there. And this has taken a lot of trial and error. This is still not a perfect solution. None of this stuff is a perfect solution, but trust me, I'm still coming up with ways to make it more user friendly. Once you use it enough though, you get the gist of it. You get the little tweaks. It just takes a little bit of time. But anyways, let's see what it's like now with uh, that 332nd in there. Yeah, that's how I want it floating. See how that tail's down? That's how we want it. So that one's, that's rigged up. That would be a perfect little floater right now for me to take out, which I am gonna fish later on. We're gonna get to fishing with it. This is a prototype Joy Thief color of the Tyrant 10. I just wanna go through the, the my preferred top rigging method. I'm not gonna go through the whole inserting the bubble in it again. I already have it in there. We did it on that previous one. This is gonna be a bottom bouncing setup that I prefer. It works great. Basically get the bait to fall at a foot per second so it can get down relatively quickly. It sits upright on the bottom. It's balanced just enough so that it can kind of come up and over rocks. You're not just grinding into them. That's a huge drawback when you're fishing big soft baits. The line tie, that's why it's so important with the head case harness, the line tie is coming off the nose of the bait, not up top of here. So when it's running into things, it can come up and over them versus getting pulled this way, trying to come up and over it. Let me go ahead and rig this one up real quick. I use the size two 
VMC and whenever I do the top ones for the most part I try and use bronze wire and a bronze hook it just hides a little bit better and to be honest like I get way more in depth on it on my own personal stuff where I'll really start melting them in repainting the tops of the baits powder coating the head the, the actual hooks themselves or painting them just to make it a little bit more but everybody's fishing different waters everybody thinks differently I feel like that's so much more of a labor intensive step that most guys don't feel are necessary. The hook itself being the color it is, I think is, is a step in the right direction and it, it works well. So we're gonna go ahead and just snap this in to the screw eye, pinch it down. And these aren't fishing pliers, but I actually really like them because the concept behind them, they got this little notch here that seems to really allow for the screw eyes to go. They're just little cheap crescent ones. And they got a small enough plier that I can get inside there and pry that thing open and close, open and close. But when you're just putting in this real light gauge wire, you don't need to open up the eye at all. It just goes right in. They naturally are open already enough for you to put the wire in. So let's just go ahead and button this down a little bit. And you have to make sure you button it down so that when you pull this wire up, the sh shank that you cut off, the hook point you cut off, is gonna sit right at the top of the bait. And then you're gonna do the same thing that you did with the other one. You're just gonna put a little bit of a bend so that it wraps around the head of the bait. So I put a little bit of a bend in it so that it can go around the top of the, the head. Kind of line it up. And we're gonna do that melting thing again because so it gets in there. But first things first, this is the only annoyance which is already being addressed in the future, is I need to figure out exactly where that shank is gonna sit on the bait and then I have to drill a hole. I've already addressed this issue but I'm already deep in on production so in the future this will be addressed. So I can see where I stabbed that hole in for that shank. I just basically need to drill that out just a little bit. So that, that you'll see that resin as you're doing it. So that when I go ahead and load that in, now that hook point can actually sit down in there. Otherwise, you're just gonna run into that resin bubbler up there. Once you drill the hole into it, once you got your placement, then you're good to go. And it's gonna allow it to sit all the way in there. Quick fill in too. This drill bit is a 1 8. For these first versions, those guys that get them and get the hangman kit, you're gonna need to worry about this. But I'm telling you right now, in the future, it's already, it's already addressed but things in production, they take time. And so I've been fishing it for four years and the whole time I've gotten it to this point where I think it's ready to go. And as I just fish it more and more and more, there's little things that I tweak. And so this is one of those things that I've changed after I've already done a massive amount of production. And I, we're not just gonna eat it. This is how I've actually fished it for a long time. It's by doing this drill method. So I'm not offering something that I haven't used personally and had success with, but it, there's just always room for improvement. But the drill bit is a 1 8 drill bit in order to give you a little bit of space. You're, obviously your wire on your hook's not a 1 8 wire, that'd be a giant hook, but it just allows you a little bit of forgiveness when you're trying to put the hook point in there. Now, if you really wanna button it down, how I did before, you can go through and you warm this up and then you're gonna push it down into the top of the bait. You could just take it like this. A lot of guys, this is gonna to be totally acceptable. You're gonna take some bronze pins and you're just gonna plug those right into the top of the bait. Got one right up in front. Two always works the best. It really keeps it locked in. Take the second one and I'm gonna feed it in. And it's, again, you're gonna to have to wiggle it around a little bit to figure out where it needs to go so that it can get around the edges of that inner piece. But boom, for most guys, that's gonna to be totally acceptable. But if you really wanna to go to the next step, how I always fish them is, I'm gonna take these pins out real quick. This pin, I'm gonna pop that up real quick. And then I'm gonna warm her, warm her on up again. If you go too much, you're gonna heat it up and it's just gonna instantly melt that plastic. It's gonna and it can kind of turn into a hot mess. 
you can see it. When I just did that little heat up, it started creating a shape of that hook. So if I want to get it in just a little bit more, I'm actually going to do this how I want it because I'm going to fish it here in a little bit. Whoa, it's cooking up good now. I'm just letting it push on in real quick. And there's all kinds of little like tweaks you can do. You can pinch down the little eye that the, the wire's on, paint it like I said, that's what I'll do, I'll powder coat them. It's kind of your imagination. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that pin back in and feed it just like that, right in there. And then same thing here. This is a very in-depth video, Jeffrey. Very in-depth. That's your top hook, easy version. And if the hooks wear out, you have you you just replace them out. You just unscrew this, you can pop that out and just put a new one on. It should be simple, on the water techniques. I know people will probably be like, oh dude, you gotta fidget with the pins and stuff. An advanced angler, a lot of times that's a non-issue. It's right inside me, every time the bait comes up, I look at the bait, if I see the pins popping a little bit, I just push it in, cast. Because I know what the actual goal is, my objective is. I'm not worried about having to deal with a little pin. I don't need to be like whoosh, 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 whoosh. casting. I need to be catching up, catching the fish that are blowing up right next to the boat. That's why we're gonna be fishing topwater later on in the middle of winter, which does not catch fish. Just keep that in mind. Doesn't catch fish. You can't catch fish on a soft bait up top. You can't do it. But the last step to this process, which I found works the best, and you can. You can weight it however you want. If you want to put less weight in it so it's a super duper slow sink and it just swims right underneath the water, you can do that. You can figure out what works best for you and your water temps. But what works best for me, fishing deeper water, 30 feet, 40 feet, 20 feet, if it sinks around a foot a second, so keep that in mind, is if I put in four of the three 30 second ounce tungsten nails. They're all gonna be in very strategic locations. First nail goes right in here. So you'll see a little hole here. Take that and you slide that one right, right in there. And then just kind of push that head in there. Next one, you're gonna put it right there at the fins, just like, just like you do if you wanna add weight for the beast hook one. You kinda of just put it right there in the fins and then this one goes right in there. And then the last one just goes just in the same position that you would if you had the floater. And you wanted to put it just in that little belly cavity and then you just push it back in there in that little tube slot. And then that's it, dude. It's set up to fish on the bottom. You hook into a fish, this thing's gonna pop free. That's the thing, I want it, I want it nice and tight to the bait until a fish eats it and then it's gonna pop free and it's gonna swing out and then you have all that leverage, it's gone. You just have a treble sticking them and you're good to go. There's a lot of concerns of having one single hook up in the head of the bait, but I can't count how many two and three pound fish I've caught on this size of a bait with just that. When fish wanna eat it, they know how to eat it. They're gonna suck it in. Little mouths this big, eating this, with the line dumped all the way out, and you're still hooking them. So, it is possible. I know guys will come up with their own rigging methods, and that's totally great. But I'm saying just this, it works just fine too. And sure, I'm gonna miss some bites, you're gonna see teeth marks back here. That shit happens. You're not gonna hook every fish that bites the bait. I can throw a 10 inch bait with treble hooks on it, watch a fish smoke it, somehow, and you still don't hook them. And they got two dangling trebles, it just happens. That's just a little warning to anybody if like, hey, I'm not getting bit, I can't, or I'm getting bit and I can't hook up. Different times of the year, I fish this all times of the year, certain times of the year, they just nibble at it. They're just nibbling at it, nibbling at it. When the time comes around when they're no longer nibbling, you know it, it turns into doosh, actual doosh. You feel them smoke that thing and you set the hook and they're there. Other times it's like, oh, uh, Oh, something, something's messing with it. Something's messing with it. Wait till you feel that dunk. Even if it's up on the surface, you're still gonna feel that dunk. I'm gonna get out there and actually fish them right now and kind of go through maybe some different techniques of 
how I like to fish them, success. That was a really long drawn out rigging process. But once you actually do it, it doesn't take that long on the water. I mean, maybe five minutes. Maybe that's an actual long time for some guys, but I think five minutes on the water, it could mean the difference between a big one or not, but so is paying attention to the little details on your bait and having something that just looks different than everything else that's provided. So sometimes you have to take that extra step, do these little things that give you that advantage on the water. It may not seem like an advantage, but I firmly believe it is. So that's it. We have a top hook setup, a beast hook setup, and a bottom hook setup. Floater, bottom bouncer, bottom bouncer, but snagless version that I can throw in the toolies. But I think these are gonna be my two prime baits for the day. Got that, we have that. I'm gonna go ahead and get them rigged up and we're gonna start fishing. For top water application, I like to fish it on 20 pound Abraze X, a 300 size Tatula, lefty 6.3 to one. And then that's just the, the top method. And then that's a prototype DRT rod right there. Say it's probably an extra heavy. I mean, it's a six ounce bait, so you can kind of figure out what you have in your lineup that can throw that size bait. You don't want something that's too stiff. You want something that's gonna have, you know, a little bit of forgiveness for you, especially if you're running the little trebles. 110 millimeter DRT handle with the flat knobs. Perfect for slow, slow rolling, big soft baits. That's my setup though. And then for uh, the bottom bouncing setup, a lot of guys are gonna trip out on this, but what I actually prefer is 17 pound test. Definitely break off some fish with it, especially if it's in rock, but I prefer it. But most guys, you're gonna have a lot more confidence if you feel like your fish aren't as line shy, 20 pound test all day long, recommend that as well. I'm just trying to give myself a little bit of an edge at 17 sometimes, uh, but I definitely pay the price for it too. I have the luxury of being able to make some more baits for myself if, if I do break off. But same exact setup, 110 millimeter handle, DRT handle, 6.3 Tatula, 17 pound test of Braze X, and then just the bait, and then the exact same rod. It's another prototype rod for me for DRT. Again, just want some forgiveness on it. Roughly six ounce bait, so that's it. That's the setups. Now it's all it's left to do is try and catch some fish, either up on top or on bottom. But I'm gonna go and try and catch them on top first. That seems a lot more fun. They explode on it. Watch out, Jeffrey, don't get in the way of the net. There's a big fish. Dude! Dude! That's a tank! 